Christmas to channel listeners. Happy holidays to everybody out there and a slightly early Happy New Year. Here's to willing that 2021 is going to be a much better year for all of us and that uh, we won't have quite the restrictions that we do. But in the meantime, we still have our music and that's what brings us all together. So thank you for tuning in to what's going to be episode number nine today. It is going to be a bit of a continuation on last week's rant on the digital formats and discussing SACDs, CDs, streaming formats, and a little bit of a tirade that I had to go on about those out there who are the purest and only want to say that there's one specific path for us all. Sad. Anyway, and... In my 10 years of this hobby, I really was looking forward to doing kind of a deep dive into SACD. I've never played around with that format before. I was really interested in it. I've been a casual CD listener. I've owned several CDs. I've done most of my ripping from CDs to build a a pretty large library up to this point. And for whatever reason, I just was never... I never did own a actual SACD back when I had the three different OPPO units. I can't explain why, I don't know what it was. I just know that it wasn't something I wanted to spend money on at that time and because I was so focused on building a regular library, doing the HD tracks, downloads, as well as finding as many CDs as I could to rip to JR River format or J River format, um, it just didn't happen. So in a very fortunate turn of events with having to keep my budget under $500 for a a used universal player, this den, I found my way to this den in DVD 3930 CI product. And after purchasing my first couple of SACDs, I've delved ever deeper into Alice's rabbit hole. Consequently, I already have those engineering men out there telling me where to move around on the chessboard, so I guess I'm just going to have to go ask Alice. Nevertheless, the Denon 3930 CI player. I have to back it up a little bit to explain that, the, again, the Denon, uh, Denon naming convention. They have st- have an incredible array of models available for you know the eastern market the japanese market as well as what's the european market and then the north north american market so i'm specifically speaking to the north american market and we have to go back to 2004 so in 2004 for north america there is of their upper models the 3910 and then there was their flagship the 30 the 5910 the flagship 5910 model in 2004 had a couple of new features to it, not to mention that is one of those special mega units. It was huge. It was 40 pounds, very heavily reinforced, has five separate DAC chips in it. And then that was the first year, or to my knowledge for the North American market, that was the first years of that brand new, it was a 10-bit Rialta T2 processing unit for the video side. So it was a really kind of another leap forward for Denon in their video technology for having a very clear picture. So with that, the 3910 was devoid of that. And then two years later, as they have to always update those model lines, the life cycle of all of their products, all consumer products, really, they brought out this 3930. And I'm going to share with you several pictures are going to be, you know, companion as I'm speaking. They'll be off here to the side. And I want to do kind of an under the bonnet and under the hood look at this kit. Because I think I'm going to say... This is one of the best returns on investment that I've ever had in the 10 years of spending money on on different pieces, different components, speakers. You know, I mean, really, rarely do I even spend this little on even cables for my system. So this particular unit, this was produced, this one's manufactured in June of 2007 or July of 2007. You'll see the actual photos of my unit that I purchased I've done nothing to this. It is that clean. The prior owner, he had the laser um, replaced. 
there were some laser issues, some tracking issues for these models, and the laser was, was necessary for replacement after a certain amount of time. The laser on this has already been replaced, but this thing is as clean as you see in the pictures I'm going to share with you guys. So, 3910, two years earlier to this model, we're talking 2004 again, it was a 20 pound unit, the 5910 was a 40 pound unit. Now, without going back and forth and going into the weeds as deep as I have, most folks wouldn't notice the nuance, the changes in those particular models because the chassis of the 3910 and the 3930 are the exact same dimensions, the exact same chassis, the, the quintessential um, you know, upper end denim for what was 10 years was built around the same exact chassis dimensions that I'll share in the specification pages with you guys. So it's pretty interesting, audioholics.com, they kind of go into these two, pro or the, the denim products and showing on that 3910, it is a very comprehensive list of what all the special specifications are. And then you get to the 30, and they're only showing you half of the specifications, and they do not talk about most of what the goodness is that's in the 3930. It's very bizarre to me because both of them retailed for $1,500 when they were released to the public. So that 3910 was 1500 and this 3930 was $1,500. However, when you uncork the bonnet on this thing, there are easily identifiable upgrades that is missing from that 3910. And then what you don't know is that the 5910 does not make it over into a 5930 model. That 5910 was $3,500 in, 20, in 2004. They basically took a lot of the internals from that 5910 and carried it into the 3930 without there being any additional expense, without them changing the price. Now, you know, this may be way too deep in the weeds for a lot of you folks, but you know, I'm the bargain hunter and <laughs> this really, a it's appreciable for me because I get excited and I feel all the more uh, success with the product when I'm looking at something that's 10, 15, 20 years old and I think I found these hidden gems and I'm bringing them forward again to share with you guys instead of, you know, I mean, God forbid, the, the esoteric models that are still out there for ten to $15,000, let alone some Sonys that are still in the five, six, seven thousand dollars $7,000 range as well. Budget orientation, budget gear, this unit versus a 3910, getting in the weeds with the pictures, guys. So this is a double, it's a double top. It's a two, two panel chassis top covered by, and I, I took pictures of this. There are two separate cut sheets of plating underneath this unit, and it still has its main base floor that everything's bolted through two. So you have three actual sheets of steel that is underneath this machine and I took pictures of that. When you take the bonnet off, take the, the top of this off, onto the side, it's a very interesting as well what I can only imagine is the heat sink for this. So it has a fully upgraded power supply that is completely missing from the 3910. This 30 has a, a, an additional power transformer, has an additional power board on the um, audio side of it, which will you'll easily be able to see when I do the side-by-side -side comparison with the pictures. And it has what's really uh, large, I wasn't able to see what the uh, capacitance of them were, but some fairly large Elna electric, little, electrolytical caps that's directly on the audio board, which is an additional audio board that's also missing from that 3910. So this has a uh, 1 8 inch aluminum heat sink that's bolted to the side of this. It runs basically two thirds of the side of this kit. And I actually have an infrared gun. And so when this thing's been running all day long, it operates at about 107, 107 degrees. So it's really interesting to see that. I could not find that or locate that on a 3910 uh, model. 
And then another big piece is the fact that for the CPU in the center, on the center top, this has a one and a half inch uh, internal fan blowing across another small set of heat sinks for the HDMI and the CPU uh, side of this board. So we have additional caps, an additional audio board, an additional transformer, additional heat sinks, as well as plating, and my gosh, they didn't change the price. It was still a $1,500 retail unit when this thing was released in 2006. And I have to bring up the fact that there was one specific quote from the Audioholics um, review of this unit where they rightly say that those who paid the $3,500 for the 5910 model could say that they feel ripped off that two years later, the 3930 has a lot of the trickle down, including that very important Rialta T2 chip. So my apologies for how deep I was getting into the weeds for this particular unit. But when you know that after all that said and done with shipping, I paid $320 for this unit, as clean as it is, with the brand new laser in it. And to me, guys, there is not a single component I have ever paid for that isn't one, you know, my little tiny uh, blue chip, blue chip, nice one, my blue <laughs> Bluetooth DAC, wireless DAC, and my Iowa little tabletop system. Those are the only two things in my 10 years that I think that I've spent under $300 for. Most of my gear tends to be above the $500 range. And as you can see later, I have these, uh, these Zoo Omen Gen 1s that are going to be in a video where I get to finally give you guys uh, what you've been asking for. A, a straight up Tekton Lore versus a Zoo Omen price for price, pound for pound uh, kickoff, but that's that's later. Anyway, digital, SACD plane. As you know, I have the Marantz ND8006. That's a streamer. It is a USB DAC. It's a uh, Wi-Fi DAC, as well as it has the internal components from their 6006 CD player, they stuff that into the ND8006 so that you have all those things. Now that's another episode from a few weeks back and I thought it would be apropos or appropriate that, okay, I give this Denon its due and say, okay, CD for CD, what's the sound quality there since I have a tw uh, basically an $1,100, $1,200 player below that's it's a brand new 2019 model oh, completely candid going back and forth with several cds with three different sets of speakers i had the tecton lures those fine audio f501s and then the borrowed ar12s that are 1978 units Candidly, I could not tell any difference from just the CD side. So your standard re red book CD playback, I could not tell a difference. There was an interesting point where they were so close and so similar that on one particular song, I actually noticed the same level of congestion, and that was on the Sia CD that I have. Some, uh, some people have real problems. There is this crescendo where... I actually hear a bit of congestion at the top and I was able to take that same CD over to my friend Dave Drusiski's at Audio Authentic Audio I Idaho. He has K horns. He has updated K horns with an all tube uh, system and I threw that CD in there. Now here's the serious kicker guys. I'm going to get my hands on that CD player. He has a freshly updated, modified Denon DCD-1520. Now that is a much older player, but he's updated the op amps in it. He's had the, uh, the electrolytic caps updated in there. The belts have been changed. Suckers nice and lithium greased up and running like a top. He paid $10 for a working 1520 with remote through another 170 bucks in it. So he has a player for less than 
$200 that with those K-horns, mind you, sounded better and did not have the congestion. So I am of the opinion I have some gremlins in my system that I need to figure out why did I have that congestion in that one point in that CD on that particular song. So it's nice to have that reference point because I could hear it in another system and there was no congestions. The K-horns are that good, but Dave has a room that can fit those K-horns. Back to the Denon. Now we're talking SACD. Okay, SACD player. I know that there are those of you who are frustrated and say there is no difference. There can't be a difference. Uh, the technology shouldn't allow for you to hear a difference because of the way the processing goes. I want you to call yourself a tear because I absolutely unequivocally heard a difference. One song is all it takes to hear a difference. Pink Floyd, uh, Shine On You Crazy Diamond, the first very song, and I had Dave over. When they get to the brass section towards the end of the song, there was no question in my mind, I'm already hearing so clearly the brass in instrumentation, the reed, the, the, almost the spit coming through that, the vibrato coming through the trumpet, coming through the saxophone. I mean, <laughs> I giggle, I laugh. It's not at the expense of anybody. It's And it's not to create this, you know, Ooh, you know, versus vinyl. Ooh, versus those that say there's no difference. Ooh, those who say, oh, you know, HD streaming's better than CD or better than SACD. It's not about that, guys. It's about, you know, I'm sharing with you my experiences, the kit that I bring to you. And with this, what's still arguably a very budget SACD player, we're not talking again, as, you know, uh, esoteric money. We're not talking about the the Sony ES777 money, the Sony modified, Modrite modified, uh, you know, 5400 series. There are players out there that no doubt will raise a Red Book CD to SACD levels. But here you have to twist your mind and you have to stop and think, okay, this is achievable for $320. This beats, in SACD form, my Marantz ND8006. Hands down beats it. There's no question, there was no contest. You put in the Madman, uh, I'm sorry, Elton John, Madman Across the Water, and the song Madman Across the Water, it's a fantastic recording, and I've already received comments from others on last week's videos that know about that specific recording, it's fantastic. There is no contest. It's better than the Red Book CD. Now, I understand those who have paid three, four, five, ten thousand dollars for extremely um, finitely tuned CD players out there. I get it that they can take you to that level. That's not the kind of money I want to spend, and that's not the kind of money I'm sharing on this channel. I agree that if you take out my Class A CP5 or sorry CP700 preamp, and I buckle in anything else. Let's say a peach tree Nova preamp that's $600. I can find one right now on Audiogon for $600. My entire system shifts down to everything would have been built for under $3,200. All in speakers, cables, amplifiers, and this Denon DVD universal player. You've got an amazing system that can give you amazing quality for less than $3,500. The My preamp is the only thing that is was a top shelf preamp at that time from Class A, and that takes it to the next level. However, you know, I'm sharing with you when I can find stuff that's $600, $500, $400, even $300, it is worth shouting at the mountaintop. You don't have to spend those crazy four figures on products to get that level of sound quality. And so that's why I wanted to share the Denon 3930 CI DVD player. 
there are those out there. I'm going to also click, uh, give you guys a link to Hi-Fi Shark. For those of you out there who are not using Hi-Fi Shark, you got to use it. Figure out what you're looking for, figure out particular models you're looking for. You can plug them in, hit save, and every morning when you open up your email, if that model has been listed at US Audio Mart, it's been listed on Audiogon, it's been listed on eBay, you're going to get an email, boom, here it is. You can jump on it if you want, or if it's within your price parameters, you can even set that. If you're looking between $300 and $600, you can set those parameters and it's going to feed your email so that you're on top of anybody who is selling a particular piece of gear. And that's how I find a lot of my stuff so quickly and is able to jump on those prices. Oh, I said a lot in a very one breath. Nevertheless, guys, if you can find a 3930 CI for under $500, buy it. Whew, boy, I'm getting hot in here. That's just how, uh, that's how much, that's how highly I think of this Denon. No, really, uh, you know, I hope, I hope you find value in this channel. I really, my, you know, I want my target audience to be those who, again, are new to two-channel listening or those who are interested in learning about some of the higher end products from 10, 15, 20, 30 years ago that didn't get a lot of attention or when I can, I find those incredible bargain basement must have products that will save you thousands of dollars or at least hundreds of dollars versus anything that's new and released lately, but will give you the pleasure, will give you the, the satisfaction. If your mindset's like mine to where I always do associate return on investment with, you know, musical attachment. And this really pisses off a lot of those engineers out there. Some of them are already saying that, you know, I'm not a true audiophile because I still listen to hard rock on my sound system. And you can't be an audiophile if it's not jazz only. Whatever, dude. Anyway, um, guys, in my mind, when I'm sitting there and I know that I'm getting the feedback, when I'm getting the, the musical enjoyment, when I'm getting the absolute uh, last bits of detail that I think I can extract from a less than $5,000 sound system. Yes, it actually adds to my enjoyment. I know that's weird for some of you, but when I know I didn't have to put together a $10,000 sound system to be 95% of those $300,000 sound systems, and I'm not knocking a particular brand out there or particular channels. I know, I know there's a Canadian crew that just spent the $329,000 on the Wilson chronographs, but it's nice to aspire to stuff like that. Like it's nice to say, hey, one day it'd be great to have a Lamborghini in the garage, but you know what? You got to maintain it. You got to have insurance on it. And then you got to have the money just to own something like that. That's just the way it goes. You don't have to fret over that. You can have a true, really good hi-fi sound system that will play whatever freaking format you want with whatever freaking genre you want and it will add to your pleasure because you know you didn't break the bank. You know that you didn't have to take out a second mortgage and you didn't have to go into crazy credit card debt to be patient to find these pieces. And I want to be the person or of many who share those pieces, those hidden gems out there. This, my friends, is a hidden gem. Now, if you can find one for three to $400, buy it. If you can find a Marant 707 for a few hundred dollars, buy it they're worth it and then if you like the sec format that much then you know that come along the way you find an esoteric for two thousand dollars or whatever the case may be then you know it's worth it to you to step up to that next level product this is the gateway i'm sharing with you gateway products at the budget prices that are realistic today that's my goal so for those of you who already have your mega systems in place and you're not interested in anything else you're just interested in hey what what am i reviewing today well let me quickly wrap this up for you 
Zoo Audio Omen, Omen uh, version 1, Mark 1s. They're going to be against the Tectons. This is going to be very fun for me because I've paid $600 for both sets of speakers. Now the Omen ones, when they came out, were $1,500. So I purchased these lowers for $600. I purchased those Zoos for $600. Can't wait to make a video of that for you guys. Coming after that, I have first to me a, a new brand that I've never even heard, heard of before, Alta Audio. I was able to purchase the IO or the yeah the IOs the their entry level bookshelf speaker. I got that second hand uh, from Massachusetts. Looks like a beautiful speaker. They're all silver, and I can't wait to share that particular speaker with you, along with some other pieces. Uh, I've got quite the lineup of used gear for the next six weeks to cover off with you, and I also put some of that in the uh, the subscription links for you guys so you can see what's on the docket and you can tune in or tune out to anything that looks interesting to you so for those of you that have been increasing increasingly coming back those of you who have been recurringly coming back i should say i really do appreciate it thank you so much for tuning in this channel and for the rest of you just rock on and keep enjoying your systems that's what it's all about and i will see you in 2021 i can say that ciao